we're asked to graph f of x is equal to the natural log of 2x. And I'll use a calculator here to find a table of values. For different x values, what is f of x equals? But then I'll hand draw the graph, which might be a little bit ironic, because I'll be using a graphing calculator to come up with the values. But I won't use the graphing function to graph it. We'll do that part by hand. So let's try a little table of values, of x values and of y values, and see what we get. So these are my x values, and let's say y is equal to f of x. So whatever the output is, I'm going to set that equal to our dependent variable and plot it on the vertical axis, and we call that dependent variable y. So let's try some really small numbers. So we'll actually, first let's remind ourselves what's the domain. What's the set of valid inputs for x that we could put in right there? So the natural logarithm is just logarithm base e. And any logarithm, it's only defined It's only defined when the input into the logarithm, in this case 2x, is greater than 0. You can't even take the logarithm of 0. You could raise something to a very negative exponent, negative billionth power. It'll get pretty close to 0, but you could never get it to 0. If you take a positive base, there's no exponent you can raise it to to get to, a, to, get to 0 or to get it to a negative number. So this 2x right here, the input into our logarithm function, in this case, the natural logarithm function, it has to be greater than 0. If that's greater than 0, divide both sides by 2, that means x is greater than 0. So that is essentially the constraint, the constraint on our domain. Our domain is all real numbers greater than 0. So let's try some. Let's try some that are pretty close to zero, just so that we get see what happens the behavior as we approach as as we as we're close to zero, and especially as the input here is less than one. So let's try. Let's try. I'll just try 0 0.1. Let's try 0 0.5. Let's try. See what happens when we get to one, and let's try. I don't know. Let's try five. Oh, I don't, actually, I don't want to go too far, because I, I, I want to be able to see the resolution down here. So let's try 1, 1 1.5, and let's try 3. Let's try 3. So those will be our inputs that we'll try. Actually, let me try, well, yeah, that, that sounds good enough. And then let me draw my axes, and then we'll plot the points. So our domain is positive x values, so we don't have to draw, we don't really have to draw much on the negative x values. But we will have some negative values here, so let me give ourselves some room to work with. And our x values go up to 3. So this is 1, 2, and 3. This is 0.5, 1.5, and then this is 2.5, which we do not use. And then let's see what our y values, our f of x's, are going to be equal to. So get out our ti85. So if we take the natural log, and remember, we have to take 2 times x and then the natural log of that. So if we take the natural log of 2 times 0.1, which is obviously 0.2, what do we get? We get negative 1.61, I'll say. Negative 1.61. Negative 1.61. And then if we input 0.5, what do we get? Get the calculator back. So we, we're going to take the natural log of 2 times 0.5, we could do that in our heads. That's 2 times 0.5. Well, actually, I'll just write it out just so it's clear what we're doing. 2 times 0.5, that's the natural log of 1. And you should be able to do that in your head. What power do you have to raise any positive base to to get to 1? Well, you raise it to the 0th power, you get 1. And well, here you go. You raise it e to the 0th power, you get 1. So this right over here should have been able to do that one in our heads. Now let's do the next one. What happens? when our it's the natural log the natural log of 2 times 2 times 1 which is obviously just going to be 2 so it's the natural log of 2 gets us 0.69 which makes sense that this is less than 1 because 2 is less than e e is 2.71 and so on and so forth so this is 0 0.69 so this is 0 0.69 now let's try the natural log of 1 of 2 times 1.5, natural log of 2 times 1.5, which is really just a natural log of 3. And that gets us to 1.0, well, I'll just call it 1.10. I'll round to the hundredths. So this is 1.10. And then finally, the natural log, natural log, if I take the natural log of 2 times 3, 2 times 3, 2 times x, x is 3. 
what do I get? This is just going to be the natural log of 6, which is 1.79. So this is going to be, there's a new color. This is going to be 1.79. So in terms of the, the coordinates, we've gone as low as negative 1.6, as high as 1.79. So let's call this, let's call this right over here, negative, let's call this negative 1, negative 1. And then we're down here would be negative 2. I'll extend the y-axis down a little bit. So this is the x-axis. This is our y is equal to f of x-axis. And then let's call this right over here positive 1. And this over here is positive 2. And this would be halfway between those, just because it looks like we're going to have to be able to see that as well. And so this first point is 0.1, negative 1.61. So 0.1, that's 1 tenth. That's going to be right around there. And then we have negative 1.61. So negative 1.61 is going to sit right about, and 0.1 is going to be even further to the left. So it's going to be right about there. Right about there. So that is the point 0 0.1 and negative 1.61. Fair enough. That's that first point right there. Now let's do this one 0.5, comma, 0. When x is 0.5, y is 0. That's, that's 0 0.5 comma 0. Fair enough. Then when x is equal to 1, y is 0 0.69. When x is equal to 1, y is 0 0.69, which might be right about there. Just approximating it. It's a little bit closer to 1 than it is to 0 0.5. Actually, a little bit closer to 0 0.5 than it is to 1. So maybe let me put it right over there. So this would be the point. This would be 1, 0 0.69. And then we have the point. We have 1.5. When x is 1.5, f of x is 1.1. When x is 1.5, f of x is 1.1, which takes us right about there. So that is the point. And I, see, I think you see where this curve is going. 1.5, comma 1.10. And then finally, so that was that point. We'll do this last one in yellow. When x is 3, y is 1.79. When x is 3, y is 1.79. So a little bit closer to 2 than 1.5. So it's going to be right about there. It's going to be the coordinate 3, 1.79. And now we can connect the dots. And I'll do that in white. And so it's going to, as we go, as we get x values that are closer and closer and closer to 0, our graph of our function is going to get more and more and more negative. It's, and, and it's going to get closer and closer to the y-axis without ever touching it. So it's just going to get closer and closer to the y-axis, slowly break away, slowly break away, and then curve out like this. Curve out, curve out just like that. And just keep on going. It'll keep on going down like this. And what happens over here is pretty cool, where as x gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, the, the function gets more and more. It becomes infinitely negative as x approaches 0. But x can never be 0. There's no power that you can raise e or any positive base to to actually get 0. You can raise it to a very large ex negative exponent. You can get, if you raise e to the negative 1 billion, negative 1 billion, you'll get a number that's very close to 0, because this is the same thing as 1 over e to the 1 billion power, 1 billionth power. So this is a number that's very close to 0, but you're never going to approach 0. You can make this number more and more and more negative, and you'll just get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller numbers, but you'll never quite, you'll never quite approach 0. So you can never have a logarithm. You can never have a logarithm of 0 here, so you just approach it. But we're done. This is the graph of the natural log of 2x. It has that typical, because this is really just a logarithm, it has the shape of a logarithmic graph.